The most common problem affecting the operation of a manifold set is the pistons being worn, grind buildup, and debris affecting the seal or making the valves hard to turn. In this video, we will show you how to rebuild your Titan manifold. You'll need the following parts and tools to rebuild the manifold. Part number 41081 is a complete rebuild kit for a two-valve Titan. And 41082 is a complete rebuild kit for a four-valve Titan. These kits include all the parts needed to completely rebuild your manifold, including the sight glass retainer removal tool. You will also need part number 41118, which is the O-ring lubricant. You'll also need a screw gun with a Phillips tip on a low torque setting or just a Phillips screwdriver. You'll need a crescent wrench or a three quarter inch wrench for the retaining nuts. You'll need a quarter inch socket or a torque wrench for the sight glass tool. Optional an aerosol can of dust remover and an aerosol can of pass load cordless tool cleaner. That you can get at your local hardware or home improvement store. We'll be using those to clean the inside of the manifold. You'll need appropriate eye protection and hand protection. I'm using the yellow jacket part number 10057 mechanics gloves and a medium. We also have a large, which is a part number 10058, and an extra large, which is a part number 10059. When rebuilding any manifold, it is very important to make sure there is no pressure or refrigerant left in the manifold. Your refrigeration manifold may contain refrigerant under pressure. Extreme caution should be observed when rebuilding any manifold. Wear safety glasses and gloves to prevent personal injury. First, check gauges for any pressure readings. If there is any pressure on your gauges, safely release the pressure before proceeding. Once your manifold is refrigerant pressure free, with the manifold ports facing down for your safety, Open all the valves completely to ensure again that there is no pressure left in your manifold. Now using your screwdriver or your screw gun, remove all the handles. Now take your crescent wrench or your three quarter inch wrench and loosen the retaining nuts on all the valves. Now we're going to remove the retaining nut feed screw and piston assemblies.
We're now going to take the sight glass tool and the socket to remove the sight glass retainer. Place the tool inside the retainer and use the wrench turning counterclockwise to remove the retainer. Take a small flat head screwdriver and remove the top gasket. Most generally, you'll only need to replace the top sight glass gasket. Look through the sight glass and make sure the bottom sight glass gasket is still in place and is still as flat. If the bottom sight glass gasket needs to be replaced, use a very small flat screwdriver and follow the edge of the sight glass with the flat part of the screwdriver to remove any gasket material that may be stuck in the threads. Then turning your manifold over, you can tap it on the table, use the back of your screwdriver, or even a hammer to lightly tap. And then remove the bottom sight glass gasket. If the sight glass sticks, do not use pressure. Use the screwdriver and repeat the process until the sight glass comes out. This does work and the sight glass will come out. If it does not come out, again, do not use pressure on the manifold. What you can do is using your Phillips screwdriver and a rag and a hammer, you can hit the screwdriver until the sight glass breaks. The sight glass will usually break into a couple large pieces. And then what you would do is over a trash can, take your canned air and spray out the manifold until all the pieces of glass come out because you don't want any of the glass pieces getting caught up in your new pistons. If the inside of your manifold has lots of debris or grime buildup, you may use the Passload Cordless Tool Cleaner to spray out the bar. In a well-ventilated area, spray over a trash can. This will remove any buildup from the inside of the valves. After you've cleaned the inside of the manifold, take the can of dust remover and again spray over a trash can to remove any remaining debris and cleaner from the inside of the manifold. When using the Passload Cordless Tool Cleaner, all the lubricant will be stripped from inside the valves. It is very important to use the O-ring grease on the piston seals before putting them back into the manifold bar. We will show you the step when we reassemble the manifold. After you have cleaned the manifold bar, you will need to inspect each bore and seat for any deep scratches, dents, or pitting. If any are found, the bar should be replaced. We'll now put the manifold back together again. Make sure the surface on the bar where the first gasket will sit is clean thoroughly. Check both sides 
of the new sight glass for any nicks or scratches before you assemble. Now put in the first gasket. Then the sight glass. And then the last gasket. You may use a little lubricant on the top gasket. By doing this, the gasket does not crimp or bulge when you tighten. Now put in the new retainer hand tight. And then take in your sight glass retainer tool and your socket going clockwise. Tighten the retainer. Do not over tighten. This could cause the gasket to bulge. It just needs to be snug. If you have a torque wrench in our production line, we set our torque at 110 pounds per inch. Make sure the gasket stays flat. You will then have a good seal. We'll now take the new piston assemblies and place the O-ring lubricant. You'll put between your thumb and your first finger, screw the retaining nut up, Place O-ring lubricant right on the O-rings and then screw it back down. This will hold the piston in place. Now we'll insert the new piston assemblies into the bar and screw the retaining nuts down hand tight. Once hand tight, take the crescent wrench or three quarter inch wrench and tighten the rest of the way. The nuts just need to be snug. Do not over tighten. On your manifold, you may have had the old style handles. Your kit will include the new style handles. Take the two yellow handles and put on the vacuum port and the charge port, or the two center. And inside you'll see you have a square insert. You need to make sure it goes down all the way onto the feed screw. Now taking your screw gun again on low torque setting. Tighten all your handles.
If you had a two valve, then you'll just have a blue and a red. After you've installed the piston feed screws and the new handles, turn down tightly each handle in order to make a tight fitting seal between the nylon and the brass seat. You can then open and close each valve to check to make sure that they turn smoothly. Your manifold is ready for use. Thank you for watching this Yellow Jacket technical tip video. If there are any other tech tip videos you would like to see, post them on the ideas page at www.yellowjacketuniversity.com.